Hello there, Ray here, and today you see behind me is the updated version of all the different types of entities as well as block sizes here in Minecraft. So this includes the new 1.13 as well as the new 1.14 mobs and blocks and how they compare to other ones in previous versions. My previous video on this went all the way up to versions 1.12. So this new one is going to include 1.13 as well as 1.14. In our last Twitch stream, we went ahead and went through all these different types of entities that are new as well as new blocks. And we discovered some new sizes of blocks as well as entities. They don't match any of the previous ones in previous versions, which is pretty awesome. So today I'm going to go over some of the more unique ones. So to see the size of the mobs or any type of entity, we press F3 and B. And this will show the hitboxes. This is a spot where you can punch and try to hit stuff. But the dragon also has little special hitboxes that you can see in the end dimension. Then we come up to like our gas and our withers. And then here we come into a new entity. And this is the Illager Beast. And the Illager Beast is, for size wise, it's even smaller than a wither skeleton, but it is taller than a slime. And like most entities, one side is the same as the other side. So you rarely find an entity in Minecraft where the width and the depth are different. And as we move down, the entities are going to get shorter and shorter. So if we got large slime as well as here's the ender crystal and we got the guardian then we move into this row and this row is where most of the mobs will end up in all the hostile mobs and even the villagers so you get like the villagers and other stuff this is also where the pillagers will sit in you see this is a very common size for most of the mobs and you also notice that this witch here has a different looking face actually in this version they um, added in the colf they call this the colf it's a similar thing as the illusioner has here so since the new villagers have like several layers of clothing they accidentally added that to the witches as well so this is not what it's going to be like in the final version but it's kind of cool to see the colf added to the witch here which always been part of the texture but just never was ever shown then as we move downwards the golem the llama and the blaze one thing about the blaze is it's actually seen as being kind of a short mob because it's smaller than most of the mobs, but this is actually the same size of the player. And there's actually other bunch of things in the game that use this hitbox. When it doesn't know what hitbox to call for, it'll use this default hitbox, the same size as the player. So like lightning can fall in this category as well. Then we move down, we keep getting shorter and shorter mobs. And finally we get here to the panda. The panda is shorter than the polar bear. As you can see, the polar bear is slightly higher. And the panda is almost a perfect cube. It's slightly too wide to be a perfect cube, but hey, it's almost really close to it. Then we keep moving down, we got like the medium sized slime, the shulkers, and we keep going downwards. You got the baby zombie. We're starting into like the really small mobs as you see here. And we go all the way down to this row here. And this is where we have one of the new types of mobs. And this is a puffer fish. This is actually supposed to be a puffer fish with the puff state of two. So if I go ahead and kill this one, and then I summon a new one, you can see what size it is. Kind of see the white lines off from the red line here. But that eventually will fix if you would leave him here. But for some reason, he just automatically shrinks afterwards. I haven't figured out a way to keep him that way. But he's actually the same height as these guys over here, going with like the chicken, the ocelot, as well as the minecart. Then there's a dolphin here, and he is slightly shorter than these. And he is a unique size. As you see, he's in a category all by himself. I couldn't get an exact size for his height, but I think it's around 0.6 meters tall. And as we move down, we come into this row. This row is supposed to have a trident here. And the trident is about the same height as a boat. And it's also supposed to be a leash here. But those things are notorious for vanishing. Then we go into this row here. And this row has another state for the puffer fish. So this puffer fish here is supposed to have a state of one. So this is a medium sized puffer fish. And he is the same height as like the phantom, which is way down here on the end. The phantom is actually very similar to that of like the cave spider, as they both can go underneath of slabs. Let me go down to even a smaller size, and here we got quite a few new ones, and this is all a brand new row. As you can see, these guys are all come from 1.13. So we got the tropical fish, we got the salmon, as well as the turtle. They're all exact same height. Even though they look kind of different, if you get down here to actually see where their hitboxes are, you can see they're all at the same height level. And then we got a new category here, and this is a unique category as well. This is a puffer fish with a state zero. So this is the smallest puffer fish, and he is just unpuffed, as they call him. Then after that, we have some of the even smaller stuff. So we got like the wither skulls, as well as the shocker bullets. Now this is supposed to be a small fireball, but there is currently a bug in the version where if you have a small fireball here, and then you re-log, it'll turn into a large fireball. So I'll even show you this happening. So let me kill this. So if I just go kill, and then if I'm pointing directly at the entity, let me make sure I'm pointing directly at the entity, then it should come up to here. This is the actual entity. And then I can kill that entity. Then I can summon a new one just by pressing this button. You can see it's a small little guy right here. Now let me just re-log. And now you see it turns into a large one. Isn't that strange? So I put that bug report down in the description. 
I'd highly recommend you guys go ahead and upvote that. Really nice if they would fix that. Otherwise, this is going to break all the fireballs on Protect that we collected in 1.8. Uh, we collected a whole bunch of small little ones from Blazes, and we put them into unloaded chunks, and then we reloaded them. And back then, it was possible to make them uh, lose their momentum. Therefore, we have a bunch of these fireballs just sitting in the Protect world without any momentum. And those are now a discontinued item. But with this bug, it would convert all the little ones into big ones, and we already have big ones, so we don't need those. And then smaller yet than those guys is we got the Endermite as well as the Silverfish, and then the Cod is in the category too and he's one of the new mobs. Now I noticed one thing that changed with 1.13 is those special name tags that I showed in a previous video that have essentially no character. It looks like just like a space. Those all get converted over into this symbol. So I think that previous one was called like a uh, no space character or something and that was kind of a cool way to make it look like mobs didn't have a name tag when they really did. But yeah that changed the way that um, those type of characters show up in Minecraft. So now they end up showing up as this. Now smaller yet than that is what we got over here. So we got the snowballs and all the other small stuff like items they all kind of fit the same category. You can see all the different things here like fish hooks and stuff like that. Now they did actually add fish bobbers to the entity list but they're not able to be summoned in so that's something that's new. And then the very end here is the baby turtle. So most babies inside of Minecraft are half the size as their adults but one of the exceptions is baby turtle so I put it in its own little category here. It's even lower down than these items. You can see it's extremely small and the actual size is 0.12 meters. This next category here is the width of the mob. So they're categorized by how wide they are. I'm gonna go through this one a little bit quicker. So the first one that comes up is the villager beast. And you can see the next one down is a spider. So he's just a little bit wider than a spider. And then as you go through, we can see that we got the polar bear as well as the panda in the same category. Both these guys are the exact same width. So at first it might not look like this, but essentially you can see the polar bear, even though his hitbox is right here, you can see that he kind of hangs over with his rendering, but they both are exactly the same width. Turtles are very wide. You can see the turtle is another new mob and it is just slightly less wide than the bears over there. Then we move down and it's not until we get into this row where we have the dolphin, which is actually the same width as all these mobs, such as like the wither and the cows and other mobs here. Then we move down all the way down till we get to this category here, which has a bunch of different looking mobs, but they're all the same width. So we got like the spiders, got the withers, and we also got the salmon as well as this is supposed to be a puffer fish with the state of two. So that's the largest size puffer fish that you would find. And this next category here is the width similar to that of the player. So if you look at the player, you can see that these guys are all the same width as them, which is kind of funny because ocelots are like the same width as like the skeletons over there. And this next category has quite a few new ones. As you see, I put in command blocks so that way when I would upgrade from like 1.12 to 1.13, I can easily summon these guys in if they have advantage. So this one is supposed to be a trident and he's the same width as, as like an arrow, which makes a lot of sense. And then we go down the row and we can see we get some of the new ones. This here is supposed to be a puffer fish with a state of one, which is a medium sized one. And they're the same width as like the cod as well as the tropical fish. Now even though there's a lot of variations in the tropical fish, they all share the same exact hitbox. Then this category is the same, and then we got the leash, and then we got a new category here, which is supposed to be a baby turtle. You can see he is smaller than that of the leash, and then even smaller yet width-wise is the unpuffed puffer fish. So this is a puff state of one. And then towards the end here, we got the other types of entities. And then down here, you would have like the area effect cloud as well as the baby mobs. So besides new entities, there's also new blocks. And these are probably the most exciting ones. I had a lot of fun going through here and finding out different types of sizes that came out with the 1.13 as well as 1.14 update. So let's first go through the block heights. So this is where you stand on top of a block and you can see like up here in the... F3 screen, you can see how high it is, like staying on top of this fence here, would put the player at 0.5 meters tall over top of a normal block. And using this, we just categorize all the different blocks. So the cool thing about blocks is a lot of times they align to pixels. And this makes it somewhat easy to categorize because the player like here is staying on top of 16 pixels, but when he moves over to here, he's staying on top of 15. This would be like 14 which also makes it kind of easy to understand. So one of the first new ones that we come into is this category here where we come into a bale. So staying on the very top of the bale is similar to like standing on top of farmland as well as cactus. Then the next row we see some new ones as well. So this is a row of 14 pixels and what we got here is a grindstone on its side as well as a lectern. Cool thing about lectern, this top part here is just all render. So if I would stand on top of it, you can see I'm actually standing on that kind of podium part. And if I scoot to the side, you can kind of see how all this other stuff, that slanted part is all just rendering. The next row is 13 pixels. And what we got here is 
a grindstone as well, but we're going to be standing on this light brown color piece right here, this arm that you kind of see, as well as the veil. If you would stand on this yellow part right here, it's also the same. Then in 12 pixels, we have the enchanting table and other variations. And then here we have the grindstone, but we have it completely upside down, and we'll be standing on this gray part here. Then at 11 pixels, it's kind of a new category. All these guys got shifted into this category. None of these guys were in this category before. So what happened is they changed hoppers in 1.13. So now when you go inside of them, you actually go lower than you used to. And then they added some new types of blocks that go into this category as well. So now we also got the conduit. If you stand on top of that, similar. As well as if you go over here and you stand on top of this grindstone while it's on the side. And you stand on this little light brown arm here. Then this category is 10 pixels. The grindstone is also in this category, but as you see, it's on its side. And then you can stand on this little brown, dark brown arm right here. Next category is 9 pixels, and this used to only have the bed, so the bed was quite unique back then. But now we also got some new ones as well, so we got the grindstone, which is turned upside down, and you would stand on this little teeny reddish brown arm right here to get the same height. And another new block with 1.14 is the lantern, and you stand on the very top of it, it will give you the same amount. And also the stone cutter here has the same height. The next row is a halfway point for the heights of blocks. So this is your slab as well as other variations. And then we got a new category here and this is seven pixels. So we got here is we got the egg from the turtles. And then we also got the lantern, but not staying on the top of it, but staying on this next little ledge right here will give you the same amount. And the last one is category is C pixels, but it has to have four of them to be this height over here. Next row is six pixels, and this is the daylight sensor and other stuff. And what we got here is also C pickles. So C pickles one, two as well as three are all going to be in the same height categories here. And also the bell, but the very low rim of it is the exact same height as all these. Now the next category should be five pixels, but they completely removed five pixels from the game. What used to be in this category was the cauldron. And as you can see, the cauldron is no longer in that category. It's in a different category. And the cauldron was the only one that was in this five pixel category that they now have removed. And this might have to do with a video that I showed where you can actually use a cauldron to clip through the bedrock ceiling in the nether. And the way that I made that work is that because the cauldron had a very unique uh, height, I was able to crouch inside of it, then re-log, and then I would clip inside of a block and then be able to jump through the block and get onto the nether ceiling. I'll put the video down in the description if you're interested in it. And that might have been the reason why they removed it. So there is actually no block that falls into the five pixel category. And out of all the different pixels that are available for these blocks, the only one that is missing is the five pixel one. So next category here is the four pixel one, and that's where they have changed the cauldron uh, bottom piece, how low you go. So now you actually go lower than what you previously did. And they also change anvils. So now you can not only stand on top of the anvil, you can also stand on this little ridge right here. As you can see, it sticks out just a little bit. So by standing on that little ridge, it'll give you the same type of height as these other blocks. The three pixel category still only has a trap door in that category and there's nothing else in there. Now we move on to the two pixel category. This has like your brewing stand as well as your snow layers, but also the lectern, the very bottom base here is the same height as that. Now the lily pad is a bit unique as it doesn't even show up as any pixels. If you look at this way, there's like no rendering of pixels from straight on this way. So this allows them to be able to put the lily pad at whatever height they want. It doesn't have to be within the pixel range. And the lily pad sits at 0.09375 meters tall. So the last one here is the carpet and that is one pixel high and there's nothing else in this category. This next category here is one that I use a lot inside of Minecraft. A lot of my technical Minecraft builds uh, use this type of weird types of block formations to be able to hold entities in very specific locations and do other really cool things. Sort of like in our lightning farm, we had to have the player move up against a anvil just so he would be partly into the next block so that he would be considered in the next chunk and therefore the lightning wouldn't be moved over and other crazy things like that. So this character also kind of uses the pixel measurement system. But in this category, we're going to be pressing ourselves up against the sides of them and seeing how we move inwards. So this is a full meter across. And most blocks in Minecraft fall into this category here. But you also have some weird looking ones such as like the grindstone turned sideways is the same as this as well as the bell. Now in this next category here, we have a couple of new ones. If we go all the way down to the end, I added new ones in here. So the very end here, we have some of the turtle eggs. So if there's two, three, or four turtle eggs, it's going to come all the way out almost to the very edge of it. So next character here is 14 pixels. And what they did is they did have the anvil have two different types of hitboxes. So 14 pixels is similar to you pressing up against this very top piece here of the anvil and not climbing on top of the base. What also is in this category is we got the three C pickles as well as the four. And we also have the grindstone turned on its side, pressing up against this brown piece here, as well as pressing up against the gray piece here. Now for the 13 pixel category, 
We have the anvil. This time you stay on top of the base and press up on the main piece right here. Then we have the two sea pickles, which is smaller than the other variations of them. And then we also got the single turtle egg. And then a couple of new 1.14 blocks are here are the grindstone turned on side, as well as the bale if you press up against this wood piece right here. 12 pixels comes in with the new ones as well. So we got the grindstone again, but we're pressing up against different part, pressing up it on the side on the grain piece, as well as the bell that's sitting on the floor and the main piece of the bell if you press up against like this, or even if the bell is hanging straight down, if you press up against this, as well as the lectern coming up against the main podium part here of it. In this category here, come down to a grindstone where we're coming up and pressing up against this brown part here. And then we also got the lantern here, which is a new to 1.14. And we got the bell pressing up against it when it's hooked to the wall on the side here. In the 10 pixel category, we go all the way down here to the back and we got the hoppers. Now 1.13, they made it so that each individual little edge here has a unique collision box that you could run into. So if you would run into this very lower one right here, this would be the same as other blocks in this category. And we also got the single sea pickle and the lantern, but if you would stand on the top of it and press up against this side here. In the 9 pixel category, we have the typical stuff as well as some unique stuff here as like the grindstone here if you press up against this gray part as well as the bell, but pressing up against this top piece here. Now making it halfway through the block is anything that is half a block wide, which is a skull, as well as we got the stairs here, which you can get halfway into the block with. So those are both 8 pixels. Then we move down into 7 pixels, which are the cakes here. And then from 7 pixels, we hop all the way down to 5 pixels. So we skip 6 pixels. There's currently nothing in the game that has uh, 6 pixels. And after that, we move down to 4 pixels, which only has a piston arm. Then 3 pixels are the doors here. And then 2 pixels are the inside of like the cauldrons and hoppers, which is really hard to kind of test because they change the way that blocks models work against players. So essentially what used to happen if you were inside of a block, then you could still collide with other parts of it. Like if you're inside this hopper, you could still collide with this edge here. But if you're actually inside of a block technically now, it will consider everything else part of that block not to collide with you. So example of this might be like this hopper minecart. You can see that it's partly collided into the stair. And in 1.12, it wouldn't be able to go past this piece here. But since they changed the way that entities collide with it, you can see once it's inside of the stair, it ignores all parts of it and it can go clear on through it. And this is something I didn't really like because it means you cannot hold hoppers or any other type of entity in very specific spots within inside of a block. But it might be related to a new thing that I found out, which came with 1.13 as well, which allows you to be able to place blocks inside of entities. So typically you wouldn't be able to place a stair here if you were standing on the edge like this, but since they changed it, now it's possible to place a stair there which is a really useful thing for builders. You can also do really cool things like having an entity here and you can still place a trap door onto this redstone block. So typically what would happen is the trap door would be placed like this and it would not allow you to collide with it. But now when it places it down, it's going to automatically place it like this. So this is the default and this is when it's powered. So you can see I can click right here and it's automatically places the trap door there. Even though normally the default model would collide with this hopper minecart. Now there is one special block in this category and this is the bamboo. As I showed previously, the bamboo sits within the block similar to that of like flowers will sit within the block. It'll kind of be randomized within inside of the block, but it'll always keep the same position as you can see will be right there even if you replace it and regrow it. But the unique thing about the bamboo that's unlike the flowers or grass or anything like that is it actually has a collision box meaning that you can press up against it. And because every block is a little bit different, you can come in with different types of collision boxes that are not within the pixel range because the bamboo doesn't sit within the exact pixels. So if you look at this bamboo here, you can kind of see that this little line sits like partly inside of a pixel. This line here hangs over pixel. This means that you can get tons of unique different sizes depending on where the bamboo sits within inside the block. This next category of blocks is a lot of times ignored or not even known about. And so this is the size of a block when you come up from underneath of it. So if I let go underneath of this solid block here and I would kind of fly up because I'm being creative, you can see that it says right here, 0.2. And this is just because the player is a little bit less than a full block. And then if I would move over to this lantern here and then press space again, I'll move upwards. And you can see it's moved slightly upwards. And these category also goes in the pixel ranges. And both these are unique blocks as they never existed before, moving in by one pixel as well as two pixels. And prior to that, you had to go all the way down to three pixels, which is where the bean used to sit here. But we also had the chorus plant, which is really hard to get a lot of times in survival because you had to actually... You had to plant the flower and then have it grow this shape. You can't actually collect these uh, 
plants in survival. I wish they would allow that so you can get these in survival. So you can place them down and make whatever creations you want. But now there's a lot easier variation of this type of lock, which is the grindstone turned upside down. And you have to go up against this little brown piece right here. And then moving four pixels in is like the piston base here, as well as they got the new hoppers. And then like this very little low edge right here, you can stand underneath that. And also standing underneath of the underside of the bell and also the bottom side of the grindstone here. Now you can move five pixels up over here where the bean was and he used to be the only one in this category but now they also have added in the grindstone and you can come up against this arm piece right here. Next is the piston arm and this used to be the only one in that category as well with the end rod but now they also have the grindstone but you can move up against this piece right here. Now moving seven pixels in gets us all the way into this bean right here which is the smallest formation of it. This one's really hard to keep in survival as the bean will naturally grow when it's in random ticked areas. But now we also have another variation and this is the grindstone here if you press up against this little edge right here. Now seven pixels in gets you halfway through. And that's where you have the top slab here. Now next category is nine pixels up and there is nothing in this category. Then we get to 10 and 10 is this hopper here if you go and press up against this top piece here. Then next is 11 pixels in and there's nothing in that category as well. The next one is the piston head, which is that piece there, as well as the very end of this piston arm here. So similar to that of like a fence, the piston arm piece here actually moves downwards. So you can't actually press completely up against it. So it partly goes into the next block. So you can see like this little gray area is in the same area as like that block over here. So a lot of people know about like fences and like gates that they're taller than just the single block they occupy. And a lot of people forget about piston arms, which actually do occupy the next block over. Then you come into 13 pixels in, which is our trapdoor. And exactly like the trapdoor is this little brown piece that comes off of the bell here. So just like you could come underneath of a trapdoor, you know, and you can go into like an ice path and you can sprint down it really fast. You can actually do the same thing with bells now. Since you can fit in here between this piece and that piece and you can press your head up against it even if the trapdoor is out of the way. And after this, there is the 14 and 15 pixels in, but there's no blocks that have those. Understanding these blocks can also help in mob farms because a lot of times with mobs spawn, they will check around them to see if they're colliding with other blocks. And if they collide with them, then they won't be able to spawn. So something like a farm like this where we would use different type of blocks to block the spawning for certain types of mobs. This is what we did on our wolf farm to get down so that we only have a couple mobs to sort out. So having something like an end rod above a grass will prevent cows as well as like horses from spawning. If you go all the way down here, you can just have some like pig spawn, you can prevent the other ones, or you can just have like your chickens and rabbit spawning and you can prevent all the rest from spawning in a small area like this. You also can do this for like hostile mobs, like you can prevent skeletons from spawning since they're slightly taller than zombies by doing something like this where you use the height of a zombie, or you can even come in here and allow it so that only like blazes or creepers will be able to spawn in, and not even zombies, because they won't be able to fit underneath these trap doors. And you'll see I use this type of behavior in a lot of my farms. One of the fellow Pro Deck members, Narcoleptic Frog, actually helped me make a Google document that illustrates some of the different size entities. And I came in and filled in all the ones that are missing and also categorized them so they're exactly as you see them in my world here. Now I will provide the world download as well as this Google document so you guys can come in here and check it out. You can also make comments if you see anything that's incorrect. And there's a tab down here for the block top sides as well as the block side and then the block sides for the bottom as well. I didn't put down all the different types of blocks here on the offside, but I got quite a number of them so that you can get a good idea of which are which. All the new entity sizes as well as the block sizes for 1.13 and 1.14. I'd like to thank you guys for watching, and if you found this interesting, show me a like and share this with others. I greatly appreciate that. If you'd like to see more technical Minecraft videos like this for Vanilla Survival, go ahead and subscribe and hit that bell button to get notifications. And if you guys find anything that looks incorrect about this, tell me down in the comments or make a comment down on the Google document. Bye-bye.